Okay. Um, I just uh, spent uh, way more time than was needed for an issue that is a relatively small um, issue. However, it's uh, it seems like a bug, um, and it's been reported as that uh, in SSIS here. Uh, when you're using the 4-H loop container, um, there's a company out there that uh, is called Ilonix. I may not be pronouncing that right. What you're used to seeing in here is, you know, the 4 each file enumerator and uh, that type of thing. But there's a uh, Ilonix actually makes a number of these uh, enumerators that aren't uh, available by default in SSIS. Uh, one of them is the 4HFTP file enumerator. And uh, that essentially lets you, instead of enumerating local files, it actually enumerates files at the FTP server level. Um, so let me just get to the uh, setup here. Um, and uh, if you're experiencing this same issue or you just want to know how to use this, uh, that's what I'll be showing you here. Um, essentially, I've already uh, chosen, uh, created my FTP connection manager here. Uh, you can go through that, choose new if you want to, if you need to create that, if you don't already have one existing. So that's down here. Um, essentially, it's going to choose the root directory here, and I'm just going to leave my wildcard directory um, archive uh, in my FTP server itself. Um, I have a folder called archive, and I have a few files in there. Um, and so that's what I'm going to be pulling here. Um, essentially, as it enumerates through these three files that are in this FTP directory, uh, you want to be able to capture the file names that are, uh, that's being looped through so you can use them for other actions within um, your uh, for each loop. <clears throat> so where you do that is right here under variable mappings. So essentially, I'm going to specify a new variable here. Uh, I'm going to put it at the uh, package level in this case. So depending on your context of what you're working at, um, you, you might want to put it at a different level. Um, I'm going to name it current FTP file bar, um, username space, it's a string, don't give any default value to read only. Um, and it's going to assign a default index of zero. In this case, we're dealing, uh, this enumeration is dealing with only one item, so that's going to be index zero. So once you set that up, Essentially, we have a new variable created over here. And uh, what I've done here is I've just created a uh, uh, script to kind of uh, debug uh, our, it was, there we go, message box. And I will post the contents of this script in the uh, video detail here. It's really easy. It's just a message box one to two ways here. And you're just going to display what's in that variable. Um, so I'll post that um, little uh, snippet of code there. Um, essentially, I believe I have this set up to run right now. I've got this next task disabled because this is where our issue lies. Um, but when I run this, I should get my variables. So here it is, my debug message box is popping up and it's saying um, your first uh, file name, Let's see if I can minimize this, get this all kind of passed down here, out of the way. Well, anyway, you get the point. So it's going to go through these. There's number two, there's number three, and then it's completed successfully. Um, so that being the case, we should think we should be good to go to add an FTP task, which you would grab that out of here, pull it over, and uh, let me enable this. And this is where I ran into an error this morning, and it was quite frustrating. So I'm just going to say, is uh, local path variable? No. I want it to go to a specific location. I'm going to create that location right here. I'm just going to go browse. Um, right here, T 
to this uh, download location here. See, I think we're going to have to choose that. Or maybe let's just need to choose a file. Is that right? Local path. Let's, let's see what it puts in there. Um, hold on a second. I'm going to pause and figure this out. It's actually not behaving the way I expected here. Hold on. Okay. Um, I figured out why. You got to specify that I want to receive files. And then when I go to choose a connection, it's asking me for a folder. So I'm just going to choose um, downloads. There we go. Um, I am really not sure if this thing is actually recording right now at the moment. Let me see if I can figure this out. I think it is. I'm just going to assume it is. And if it's not, well, I guess. All right. <clears throat> okay. So. Um, I've specified that overwrite. I'm going to say overwrite for the moment. Uh, receive files and is remote path variable. So this is where you would want to use uh, the variable that you've used in the collection uh, portion of the for each loop. So you'd say yes, it's a remote variable. And you go, and there it is. And then when I hit OK, we'll notice that this actually tells us, hey, uh, the connection uh, is empty. Um, it's actually not the error I was getting before, but let me check this out. All right. Um, let's uh, run this. Connection is empty. Yeah, I'm going to have to look and see what it did here. Hold on a minute. All right, I'm just a little bit uh, apparently uh, losing it today, but uh, that's all it wanted was uh, me to specify my FTP connection. So now that I've done that, let's give this a shot. All right, this is the error that I was getting that I spent such a long time. And if you search for that error, you'll find a bunch of people who are confused and don't know how to deal with it. Um, it is a... Uh, uh, kind of a tough thing to, to deal with because as I look at this, if I disable this and debug it, um, what I'll actually see is it does have a leading uh, slash uh, there for the directory. And so um, when I was seeing it earlier, I wasn't even using a, a directory, so it was reading just the slash and then my file name. Um, so everything looked like it was, uh, you know, just fine. Um, so I was really scratching my head at that. So turns out there's two ways to resolve this. One of them you probably don't want to do, but one way is to go to delay validation and change that to true, and that'll actually resolve the issue. But it's resolving it because it's not trying to validate the value that's that's coming out uh, for each uh, FTP file. So as what we do is go to variables and look at this. We've got a value. Now, we don't normally use this value because it's being dynamically filled. But if we put a slash in there, uh, I believe our problem should go away. Let's uh, double click in here, hit OK. There we go. Now it'll actually work. So I hit play, it debugs, da da, on to the next one, and so on. And then it completes. So um, if, if you're having that issue, that's all you got to do is throw a value in there because it's expecting to see at least a slash. It's going to fill it dynamically based on what you put in the uh, collection, I'm sorry, the variable mappings. Um, uh, section here, but it still wants a placeholder in the meanwhile while it validates. Um, so anyway, that is the uh, solution there. I hope this all recorded fine and uh, hope that it helped you.
you with uh, any issues you're having. Thanks.